What's the dark side to recycling and how does it fit into the exploitation of the developing world by the developed world? Well, we have an author as our guest today who's written a debut novel that addresses these two questions and lots of other really exciting and, well, maybe exciting is the wrong word, but lots of other questions that directly concern our present and our immediate future. I'm incredibly excited to have him on. And of course, I am Angus Stewart, and you're listening to the Translated Chinese Fiction Podcast. So our book is Waste Tide, Huang Chao by Chen Chiu Fan, and he's our guest too. This is, of course, episode two of four, at least four, but probably four, of the Churchific sci-fi season. Of course, the first episode of the sci-fi season was Hao Jin Fang's Folding Beijing. Now we're at the halfway point with Chen Chiu Fan, so really hope you enjoy it. Before I launch right into the amazing interview I had with him, I'm just going to do the plugs. So the plugs are, of course, first of all, the show's social media platforms on Instagram, Truchific, TR, <laughs> why am I blanking this? <laughs> T-R-C-H-F-I-C, and my Instagram, uh, Angus Likes Words. You can use both of them to leave feedback on the show if I missed anything, and I know I've missed things in this uh, interview because there was things I wanted to say that forgot to say because I was too caught up in chatting to. Uh, chill fan. So yeah, there's that. If you want to support the show financially, help me cover the hosting fees, you can do that on Patreon where you'll get access to bonus content. And also there's Buy Me A Coffee where you can give a, a little one-off contribution. So plugs are done, let us charge on and listen to me having my chat with Chen Chiu Fan, the author of Waste Hide. So I'm on the show with Chen Chiu Fan. He's the author of this episode's book, Waste Hide or Waste Tight, sorry, not The Waste Tight, just Waste Tight. And he's one of the big names of 21st century sci-fi in China. Uh, he also goes by the name Stanley Chen. So if you hear me say Stanley, Chiu Fan, Chen Chiu Fan, or Stan, it's all the same person. So uh, with that in mind, Stan, how's your day been today? Um, yeah, I'm just working as usual on something because I just back. Uh, Singapore Writers Festival and Hong Kong International Literary uh, Festival. So it's kind of like uh, caught in something there. Yeah. Mm. A lot of travel. That's exciting. Yeah. So speaking of travel, um, just like the last two people we had on the show, uh, Michelle Dieter and Liu, Liu Guangzhou, um, we too, we met at the Leeds Genre Fiction Symposium, um, and you were there talking both to the symposium and to a public event afterwards, and I think in both cases, you weren't just talking about your own writing, like some writers might, you also were really, um, I guess, prioritizing talking about the ideas in your writing. A lot of those are ecological, environmental ideas, and I noticed um, when I was looking online during my dissertation on Chinese sci-fi, that's something you do a lot, um, both in internationally, so I guess in Chinese media and English language and international media, and like we saw at the event offline, but also online. So am I right to say that this kind of reaching out is a really important thing for you? Um, yes, especially in recent years, I've um, been traveling a lot like uh, to different countries and have this kind of talks and sharing and symposiums with uh, uh, both uh, readers and also academic people. So I think it's very inspiring to hear uh, the real feedback from uh, all these uh, readers and also the uh, researchers uh, always give me something new to think about. Absolutely. Uh, you said that you'd been to, uh, s uh, not Switzerland, sorry, uh, Singapore and Hong Kong. Obviously, we saw you yes. in the UK. Have you been to yes. any other um, other non-English speaking or non-Chinese speaking places? Uh, yes. Uh, like uh, yeah, uh, last year, I've been to Italy and also Frankfurt Book Fair and also mm. some other book fair in uh, Southern America, is in Chile and also Uruguay. And I, I've been to um, like uh, Sweden and Korea and also Japan for sure. Uh, there's there there's a lot of like science fictional. Uh, convention and symposium all around the world. 
Mm. Um, now, I know I'm I'm asking questions that are maybe a little bit besides the point, but is Chinese sci-fi well-read or popular in those neighboring countries, Korea and Japan? I think, um, especially this year, like the three-body problem finally get translated into Japanese and mm. it become phenomenon. Um, and it sold out like in uh, the first day, so they they had to uh, print more copies like uh, like crazy. So so I think yes, right now it becomes something big and very popular mm, okay. in Japan and also in Korea. Yeah. Uh, last question on this tangent: Do you know if the Japanese translation of Three Body is uh, directly from the Chinese or if it's a relay from um, Ken Liu's English version? I think they did it both sides. I think uh, because one translator I know, like uh, she can read Chinese, and also like I think they're doing it directly from Chinese, and mm. also um, there's some reference um, with Ken's uh, edition. So I right. think because they change a lot uh, from the Chinese to English. So I think there might be something aligned with the English edition as well. Okay, that um, that will pop up again, this topic of um, changes made to the English version when we're talking about your own book. Um, so with that in mind, and uh, moving on, is there anything else about you or waste hide or your other work that you'd like the listeners to know before we keep going um um not so far because um i think we'll talk about it later um yeah okay you're very right so here's the first question about waste hide uh, and it's a really mm -hmm. open question yes what's it about uh i'll say uh waste hide is about a lot of things in different layers so basically it's a, a near future uh cyberpunk um dystopian you can put all these labels on it mm. so it's about like uh in near future in china there's a small island called silicon isle so there's a lot of like electronic waste uh, shipped from the developed countries so we have a lot of like uh you can say cyborg or waste people uh dealing with all this uh waste and making money and uh, also like uh, doing this kind of operation uh, as an ecosystem. So there will be some um, U.S. Uh, technology company involved try to upgrade, as they say, uh, upgrading the uh, recycling uh, uh, system to make it more efficient and more clean and more eco-friendly. But somehow there's some local um, plans who uh, running the business uh, who refuse to do so because they have their own interests inside. So my protagonist actually is one waste girl who who was a migrant worker and she got uh, abused or damaged by uh, both the environmental issues and also from the uh, local gangster. So. The story basically is about how she was survive and also uh, resurrection from the disaster and finally become some uh, uh, warrior or goddess mm. like uh, leading her, her people to fight against the, 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 the system. So change the whole dynamic in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what you said right at the start there about it being a near future novel, I think that's mm -hmm. when I was reading it, that really um, jumped out at me. It feel a lot of what's discussed in it is stuff that is immediate, <coughs> sorry, immediately relevant to what's happening today. And I suppose if you're being strict in that sense, it's, it's not sci-fi. Um, and it, it struck me as a little bit of a contrast because... Uh, the first Chinese sci-fi I read was, mm -hmm. and most of the sci-fi I've read, not even the Chinese stuff, is, you know, it's in space, it's far in the future, it's a very big scale. Yes. Or even the softer sci-fi, um, again, Chinese and not just Chinese that I've read, it's maybe not so big and it's not in space, but the technology is a very new and different thing, or we're maybe very far in the future. But um, 
the waist height is really it feels like it it felt to me anyway like it was definitely about today but with some mm-hmm. technology that is a bit far, further forward some more crazy things but mostly super duper relevant to the real world especially uh, as we'll find out a little bit more when i ask you about uh, the setting but uh, before that Am I right in saying this is your first novel and before it you've written of some or you've published some short stories? Is that correct? Yes. Mm. Um, can you tell us, was it a little bit tricky uh, to change to the novel form or were there any challenges or was it anything that was very mm-hmm. different? Yeah, like uh, it's totally different. Like uh, it's just like running a marathon uh, mm. compared with like uh, 100 meters. Uh, so... I have to say that I don't have a lot of experience uh, before I'm writing uh, Waste Thai uh, because its lens, its structure, and maybe a lot of like characters and uh, maybe storylines is, is very difficult as a beginner uh, on novel writing. So from a short story writing, because it's like totally different things. Um, so I, I, I learned a lot and I still am like finding a lot of things I try to improve. Like if I'm looking back in the days I writing uh, this novel, but I think it's very precious uh, experience um, mm. while I'm doing which type because and um, it's the f- very first time I try to build up uh, uh, this scale of uh, narrative and using this uh, complicated uh, POV. So mm. you you can say it's uh, a it, success or it's uh, it's not that success, but I I think to me it's like a very nice uh experiment because i try to use a different uh, uh perspective to bring out different message according to their own background their own position so yeah. i think um i try to build up uh not black or white uh, mm-hmm. uh word like every everything or everyone is setting in a great zone so you can see from their perspective and you feel they're all reasonable for them to making those decisions even yeah. you can say it's evil or bad but in a in in a way that it is all reasonable it's uh, acceptable so mm-hmm. i think to me writing a novel lens uh, work is uh it's a wonderful and amazing journey so it's just took me one year to finish while I was working for Google. So I think um, this kind of experience, you never, uh, uh, you never like uh, took it back uh, for the second trial because uh, when you writing the second one, it's totally different thing. So you set up different expectation, you have different experience and people treat you differently. So mm. I think your first novel uh, for sure is a, uh, treasure yeah for everyone Mm. so you were you were saying that you had to um or you it was your first time taking these different perspectives of a variety of different characters and understanding their point of view so i was going to ask you about this a little later on but i think we can jump ahead so uh some of the i guess although you said your main protagonist is the waste girl uh whose name is mimi Mm -hmm. there's a few Mm -hmm. other characters who get a lot of um i guess page time or word count or whatever where it's their perspective yes. um so the two the other two i noted down there's uh, chen kaizong who is uh he's an american an overseas chinese i guess a chinese american mm-hmm. and there's yes. scott who is uh he's mm-hmm. the american guy representing the company and mm-hmm. yeah you, I, I definitely think you really your efforts to give us their point of view and their kind of reasons for doing what they do were really good especially scott because i think if if this was a third person story scott would be a spoilers uh, a pretty bad guy but mm-hmm. the way you showed us where his, his feelings or his his perspective or his position i did kind of mm-hmm. find myself agreeing with some of the things like he, you, you show us his thoughts and his perspective on things and he's yeah he's, he's absolutely not black and white he often starts with a pretty good understanding because he's the foreigner in the foreign country 
and uh, I think as a as a foreigner in China goes, he's not too bad. He's he's quite adept at learning the the situation. But it's just because he's representing this dodgy company. That's one reason why he、mm-hmm. does his bad things. And everything I've said about him, you could say just as much about the other two characters. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. To me, it's like in a triangle、uh, on these three characters. Mm. And kind of keeping balance on different perspectives. So yeah, you can say like、uh, there's maybe not only one protagonist but three.、Mm. That's、uh, to me is like acceptable. Yeah, because it, they they all like、uh, deliver different message from a different perspective. Yeah, and、uh, I think we'll, we'll get into the the setting in in my next question I have for you. But I should also say, although Mimi is the The character who's not at all American. She's also、uh, a migrant worker, so she's not from the Waste Island、uh, town that the story、yes. is set in. So alongside these three, you've also included some minor characters who are the the local people.、Um, so on that topic,、uh, topic talking about the setting. So for every episode I've done, I always try to find a way to talk about what region or area of China the story set in.、Uh, so, for example, there was、uh, the Chili Bean Paste Clan、uh, by Yang Ge, Woman Jia,、mm-hmm. where the setting、yeah. of Sichuan、yeah. is pretty important,、yes. especially the small town. And I did、um, mm-hmm. Empire of Dust, Non Mim Di Guo by Jiang Zilong,、mm-hmm. where the、mm-hmm. setting of it being the north is important, but the particular province not so much. And then some of the other、mm-hmm. stories, the setting's really not important at all, and I can't talk about it much. But for this book,、um, getting to the point, the setting's really important.、Um, so can you tell、yeah. us why? Why is the setting so important?、Um, yeah, the the setting was in a、uh, southern part of China, is in Guangdong province. So actually, it it is where my hometown is in.、Mm. So actually, is、uh, I using the real location、um, as a as a blue uh, blueprint. Uh, so just make adding some fictional layer on it because、um, uh, in the book uh, doesn't like uh, uh, very local uh, culture and food and Dialects and also like traditions、uh, in there because I think it's very relevant in Guangdong Province where I was born and raised.、Uh, there's a very strong、uh, tradition of、uh, this kind of like clans,、mm. and people were so strongly connected by their blood、mm-hmm. and family. So I think it's kind of like community, very similar to、um, to this kind of like uh, uh, both like futuristic, but also very traditional uh, way. Uh,、mm. So、um, as you can see, there's a lot of like、uh, technology being used, but in a very、uh, superstitious way.、Yeah. So that's how I experience. Said uh, 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 since my childhood, so、mm. that's the very mixture of uh, this uh, specific area in China because we are pretty close to the、uh, Pacific Ocean. We are at the coast, and we are very uh, uh, open to the Westerners' uh, culture、mm. and technology and 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 all this kind of uh, uh, value. But meanwhile. There's very strong uh, 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 ancient rituals,、uh, belief system, and also、uh, this kind of、uh, value system、uh, within our、uh, daily life. So there's huge conflicts, and also there's some harmony existing uh, uh, simultaneously. So、mm-hmm. that's、uh, I think it's very unique and didn't been、uh, explored before because in China the literature history is mostly based on、uh, Mandarin,、mm-hmm. which is a very northern、uh, official language. But to me, is like、uh, Chinese is is very diverse. We can have different、uh, dialects.、Uh, like here, I using a lot of different dialect, like. Chaoshan Hua, like、uh, Cantonese, and also、mm. Mandarin, and also、uh, Japanese and English. So there's a lot of different、uh, culture there, and 
deliver the message from different language. So yeah. I think the location is super uh, important in my book because uh, this is the, um, this is the uh, nuance and the authenticity I try to uh, bring to my readers as a real holistic China, mm -hmm. um, not just a, a very uh, symbolic and, and simplified Chinese uh, uh, image here. Yeah, um, that's that's something I think is really worthwhile doing. And I know uh, Ken Liu has said, in, like in his view, China is often mm -hmm. misunderstood by Westerners as being this one thing, homogenous, and in his opinion, it's almost the opposite. It's a, I think he's called it a collection, a diverse collection of many, um, many cultures. So yes. um, on that point, because he's he was the translator of this book, and he's he's got like a little auth a translator's introduction where he pays special attention to explaining the way he's uh, translated your uses of the different uh, dialects and regional languages. Mm -hmm. So what I'm curious yes. about, because I've only read the English version, is when you're yes. using the local language and dialects, um, what do they look like in Chinese on the page? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we can only use Chinese to um, express, um, uh, and especially even you use dialects, uh, you can only uh, put them down in Chinese characters. Mm. So I think all we can do is like using some uh, very local expression. Like there's different way of saying one thing in Cantonese and in uh, Chao, uh, Chao, Chao, Chao mm. So also we will put some uh, Romanian uh, uh, like alphabet, uh, like help people understand how to pronounce it yeah. uh, correctly. Yeah, though, so I think it's uh, very important to me because I try to bring this kind of like uh, diversity to my readers to help them understand there's not only one way to express uh, a, a food, a, a fish or, or, or something, uh, very daily life. So uh, we try to create this kind of atmospheres. Mm. Um, so in, in the English version, when um, Ken Liu wants to show you how... Uh... I guess a, if it's a Chaoshanhua or a local, just some the local dialect is written. He sometimes takes the the sounds and puts them in, like you said, in the Roman alphabet. So kind of mm -hmm. like a, a pinyin, but not for Mandarin for the local dialect. So did I, what I'm curious about? I forgot if if you've said this before at the symposium we were at. Was that using a spelling system that already existed, or did you and Ken come up with a spelling system for that? Um, actually, we're using some very uh, already exist. There's some uh, Cantonese uh, dictionary and also uh, Chaoshan dictionary. So right. we just uh, yeah look it up and use it. Okay, okay. Well, I'm glad that's a nice straightforward answer. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so getting back slightly to what you said about the strength of clans and family in in this region, I guess in uh, Guangdong. There's a little passage in the book where you that I highlighted because I liked it so much, where um, the narrator or one of the characters is describing how these local clans on the Waste Island have kind of evolved along with capitalism, and they've kind of evolved mm -hmm. almost into businesses. And I, I don't really have a yes. question. I just wanted to say to the listeners, that's awesome. It's a really good bit. And there's quite a few sections in the book which are there are little it's the kind of sci-fi thing where it's explaining something but the way you do that it's very uh it's not too long it's not too short and the explanations are very just very detailed and satisfying to read so just wanted to say i like those i don't really have a question for you there thank you i do have one more question about the story mm -hmm. um it's relating to something um the last guest guan zhao um said to me he, he was telling me that folding beijing didn't get a yes. lot, or got some a little bit of criticism in China mm -hmm. because he told me uh, readers in the PRC generally mm -hmm. prefer hard sci-fi, so like very sciencey sci-fi to the softer stuff. Uh, so two questions: Do you think he's right about that? And and second question: How hard or soft do you think waist height is? Yeah, I think Guangzhou make a point that uh, most of the Chinese sci-fi reader 
actually got their reading experience from Golden Age uh, mm. sci-fi. So back from the uh, Asimov, Clark, and Heinlein age. Yeah. So pretty much they are uh, shape, uh, shaping their uh, preference and taste uh, from those uh, classic works. Yeah. So that comes to the uh, definition of hard sci-fi and soft sci-fi, and also like from Xia Jia, the porridge sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So there's some hierarchies there, like hard sci-fi is always uh, like uh, on the top, and maybe soft sci-fi is like uh, a little bit uh, uh, below that, but uh, like uh, be under uh, un undervalue. But uh, uh, to me, it looks like uh, the that dynamic is changing uh, because right now, as we introduce more and more. Uh, modern or contemporary science fiction to China, like those from uh, Ashra Le Guin, uh, Philip K. Dick, Ted Chiang, Ken Liu, and also from uh, La Vie, Tioha, and Charlie Jane uh, Anders, uh, so many diverse writers and works. So I think right now for some readers, they start to realize there's not necessary uh, a, a, a borderline between hard sci-fi and soft sci-fi. They're only mm -hmm. good and bad sci-fi. Yes. So I well think, um, yeah. So, for example, waste time. There's uh, a lot of like uh, info dump there. So you could say it's hard because I really look it up in some research and paper. Mm -hmm. But also, there's a lot of soft part, like uh, talking about uh, relationships and. Mm -hmm emotions and also there's some uh poetic uh moments which is not relevant to science and technology at all mm -hmm. so i think it's like a mixture i didn't really think about if i'm writing a hot sci-fi or a soft sci-fi yeah. at the very beginning i just try to tell the story i want to tell mm -hmm. so i i I think that's the message I always try to uh, deliver to my authors and also to the mass audience in China, like how we can open our mindset to and to accept more diverse uh, science fiction in genre and on themes and on uh, different narratives. Mm. Yeah. I'm really embarrassed that I forgot the word info dump. That, that was exactly what I was trying to say a minute ago, and, and instead I was just saying bits where the author is explaining. But yeah, um, yeah, the, the, the info dumps are not too long, not too short, very good, like I said before. And, and for listeners who are curious about what porridge sci-fi might be, if you haven't heard that term before, I'll just say wait until the next episode and we might be talking a little bit about that. Um, thank you for your answer, uh, Stan. So I'll go on to asking you some translation-y themed questions, although we've, cool. we've already touched on this. Translation and cool. maybe also some publishing aspect stuff. So first question. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned the last episode we talked about Folding Beijing. The translator of that story mm -hmm. was Ken Liu. Mm -hmm. And as we've mentioned before, he's the same guy that translated Waste yes. And he's translated quite a few of your other stories, I believe. So how did you first get in touch with Ken Liu? Yeah, it, it's a very interesting story back in, I think it's like 10 years ago. So I, I read the story, uh, The Algorithm for Love uh, online. So it, it's, it's the very first story uh, uh, from Ken. I'm pretty into that story and I searched the name Ken Liu because I didn't know him very well back mm. then. I think he's pretty new in, in the in the industry mm. and pretty early career. And I, I I found his website and there's a his contact uh, email there and I sh shot him an email that say, hey, I really like your story and I would love to translate or introduce your work into China market mm. uh, because I think uh, you are a, a Chinese American. So I, I, I totally believe there's a lot of uh, 
readers here would love to read your work. Uh, mm. I, I feel there's a lot of connection between uh, your work and Chinese uh, uh, people, so and culture for sure. So that's、mm. how we build up the uh, uh, connection, and we、uh, become friends, and we uh, uh, we have a lot of like. Uh, Uh, conversations and and after we're like in maybe one or two years later that I send him some story I hire some、uh, translating company to、uh, to translate for me it's the fish of Li Jiang so、mm-hmm. I ask him to do me a favor to like see if like there's anything we can do to、uh, improve. And he told me like、uh, we have to redo it from scratch because <laughs> they don't think the company did a very good job because they mostly doing business translation rather、right. than literary、uh, translation. But、uh, yeah, as you know, it's totally different thing and it's totally、uh, difficult for them to do the job. So I think Ken Liu just. Take on the job, and he redo it from scratch, and、uh, didn't get pay, and didn't have any kind of expectation on the market、uh, back then. So, and we got published on Clark's World and won an、uh, award on science fiction and fantasy translation、uh, award.、Uh, the very second year, I guess it was in 2012. Mm. So that's how everything、uh, start to、uh, rolling the stones. I, th- I think so.、Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting story. And、um, if listeners are interested in reading the fifth, the, the, the sorry, the fish of Li Jiang, that's in Ken Liu's Chinese sci-fi anthology,、uh, Invisible Planets, along with I think two of your other stories,、uh, Year of the Rat. Yes. And the, yeah, is it the Flower of Shadzui? Is that it? Yes. Yep.、It's、exactly. Yep. And、um, what you were saying about Ken Liu being his his writing having a I guess a connection with Chinese culture. So I know、mm-hmm. that he's quite careful to stress that he's he's a, an American first. He's not not to be considered a Chinese writer. But this the book of his that I've read,、um, the Paper Menagerie. It's a I think it's a mostly sci-fi collection of stories that he wrote. Some of them hard sci-fi, some of them soft, some of them in in the middle. Yes. Like Waste tide. Yes. And some of them, from what I remember, maybe a few of them aren't really anything particular to his、uh, Chinese American identity or Chinese culture. But the stories that do involve that are fantastically done. The way that they kind of Reinterpret or reimagine Chinese culture, or the way that they connect with American or Western culture. Some of those are fantastic.、Um, there's one where、uh, now, what is the big strong guy from Sanguo called?、Why、yes, yes. What,、uh, Guan Yu. Guan Yu. There's a story with、yeah. Guan Yu in the yeah, Wild yeah, West, yeah. which yes, that sounds、yes. silly, me describing it, but that's a fantastic story. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And the one、uh, that the the book is named after, the Paper of Menagerie. I think、mm-hmm. if unless listeners, unless your heart is totally black, that story will make you cry. That's a fantastic story with a very subtle kind of sci-fi inclusion of Chinese or Asian stuff. It's so good. So yeah, again, that's not a question for you, Chiu Fan. I just wanted to say that. Next question, it's about you and Ken,、um, and I、mm-hmm. already know the answer to this one. I'm just setting you up.、Um, mm-hmm. Were you involved、yeah. much in the translation of Waste Tide?、Mm-hmm. Um, yes, actually, we did、uh, have this kind of like、uh, exchange ideas, like because we have to work together with our editor from Tor. So actually,、uh, my editor Lindsay Hao,、uh, she will give some comments.、Uh, On the translation, and we'll read and discuss, and I'll revisit、uh, my、uh, Chinese edition and make some change accordingly, and then Ken will translate it into English again. So it's like a, a, a three-party like collaboration.、Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, but also I I have my uh, uh, fully trust in、uh, in Ken's、uh, building work. So I just let him do. Whatever he th- thinks、uh, is correct and and and、uh, appropriate to do. So I think mostly I just re- respect、uh, what he、uh, his option on、uh, 
sentence level or like or uh, words level. Mm. So um, yeah. So but sometimes he ha- might have some uh, un- uncertainty and maybe there's some uh, doubts on the the original test. So then we'll discuss and maybe there's some uh, ambiguous uh, in Chinese writing. You know, as always, there because Chinese language is kind of ambiguous. So I might put it in a more accurate way,、um, especially on the timeline, because from the for the Westerner, maybe there's some certain type of、uh, tense. Uh, mm. Tenses there, but in Chinese we don't have、uh, past tense,、uh, we don't have、uh, future tense, so everything is just、uh, like f- flowing,、mm-hmm. like、uh, spouring. So、uh, sometimes it just make、uh, Westerners、uh, feel confused.、Mm. So we might need to arrange some of the timelines accordingly to make it more clear, and that's basically how we collaborate、uh, on Westide.、Mm. I remember when I first told my dad that、uh, the Chinese language doesn't have any kind of tenses. <laughs> he tried to make some deep philosophical point about how your language changes、yeah. the way you interpret the world. Do you think any of that's、I、true, think, or do you think it's nonsense? I think it's true. I think it's really true. So <laughs> yes,、mm. and also、uh, I, I I really thinking deep into that. So maybe it will also affect the way we. Think about、uh, the space and time、mm. um, continuum. So, and also the sense of time. I think in a way. So maybe it would be another good uh, uh, material for writing another、uh, fiction. Sure. So I, I I think yeah, and also like、uh, how Easterners、uh, treating like the the relationship between the.、Uh, Subjectivity and the objectivity, so it's like very different from the Westerners. I think、mm-hmm. it's not uh, that uh, dualism. I would say it's more uh, uh, connectivity and more、uh, embedded、uh, into each other. So I think it's very、uh, in in integrated、uh, system there.、Mm. I think so, these、yeah. kind of questions, it's easier to deal with them in fiction. Because it can、yes. be a story, you're not making an argument. But if I just wrote some essay <laughs> online or on Twitter about、oh, all Chinese people are X, all Westerners are Y, well, if yeah, I was yeah, some figure, I'm going to get in trouble for that, you know? Because you got to be yeah, for sure. You know, There's yeah, there, there'll be a lot of trolls like <laughs> chasing after you. For sure, yeah,、um, yeah. It's an interesting thing to think about, but I. Well, there is that one story that deals with language and time. It's the one that was made into a movie,、uh, Arrival. By、mm-hmm. well, the Arrival's、yes. the movie name. What is the story name? It's history of something. The story、else. of your life. That's the one. Yes, thank you. I'm glad、yes. you're less ignorant than I am. Yeah, that's a. If if listeners haven't seen or read that, that deals with pretty much what we were talking about in an interesting way. I've only seen the film, but it's a good film. Yeah, it's a good、uh, story as well. Uh, yeah, Tech Chang is a is a genius, I'll say.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、um, a recommendation for the listeners. There's another podcast that talks about a couple of Tech Chang stories. It's called Very Bad Wizards. It's mostly a psychology and philosophy podcast, but occasionally they talk about a story or TV show, and they quite like these mind bending thought experiment stories. So if if you that sounds interesting, just do a Google search for Very Bad Wizards. Enough said there.、Um, I'd like to ask you some environmental、uh, themed questions, Chofan, because, like I said、mm-hmm. before, yes, when you do your author, what what would traditionally be author promo, you take the chance to even move completely away from the story and talk about these issues. So I don't know if we mentioned Guiyu yet.、Um, can you tell us where、yes. and what Guiyu is? Yeah, Guiyu is a small town, like sixty kilometers、uh, from my. Hometown Shantou is on the southeast coast of Guangdong and also China. So yeah.、Mm-hmm. And what happens in Guiyu? What's the economy? So yeah, back in I think from the nineties to、uh, I think very recently, it like、uh, it's、uh, the 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 
economy there was basically uh, building uh, the recycling of electronic waste from abroad, mostly uh, uh, shipping in an illegal way. So they hire a lot of uh, migrant workers to disassembling all this kind of uh, motherboard cables and uh, circuits there and uh, try to uh, uh, attract some uh, materials like metals uh, from them and make some money. So that's how the uh, uh, industry worked there. And But it caused a lot of like uh, environmental issues like uh, totally uh, disaster, uh, pollution on air, water and soil and also damaging the health uh, to the people uh, like the, uh, the ladder in the blood uh, um, and also a very high uh, rate of cancer. Mm. So, um, so it was like when I was writing the book, actually, it was uh, just about to transit um, because uh, right now, uh, at the very beginning of last year, I t- mm. actually China has banned it, uh, 24 types of foreign uh, waste, including e-waste. Mm-hmm. So Guiyu is like uh, one of the upgrading uh, showcase here because after like I think it's seven or six uh, eight years of uh, construction of the uh, eco park so right now they build up uh, this kind of uh, park that uh, uh, have a more uh, uh, efficient recycling uh, uh, streamline and also a best uh, a better uh, health care and also medical cares for those uh, workers mm. and also we can see the uh, quality of water and air has been um, um, in enormous uh, 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 improve but uh, while the soil is still like uh, takes time longer to uh, recover so uh, I think the things has uh, been improved a lot but I, I think there's also some um, like harm be, uh, be transferred to other mm. uh, part of the world uh, for yeah. example to Southeast Asia to India to Africa and also to I think it's to uh, Southern America. So it's it's the uh, it's a global issue. It's not just happen in China. Totally. Uh, so yeah. So I think we need to see the whole picture here. Yeah. I mean, I, I in the last episode I tried to relate some of these issues to my hometown Dundee the issues relating to class in folding Beijing and this stuff about yes. the pollution being exported to less developed economies that totally applies because my hometown Dundee used to be a factory town so in the city centre mm-hmm. we have lots of nice old buildings that were built by the money from that mm-hmm. but a lot of them are yeah. still stained by the smoke and some of them have yes. been cleaned and with the black stuff cleaned off they look so much better mm-hmm. but of course yeah. those that industry some of it has been replaced with more high-tech stuff but the bigger picture is of course the factories moved east to eastern europe or to to asia and now like you're saying this these kind of dirtier things in the economy although they've left guayu which is great for guayu they presumably the waste hasn't gone away the waste has just gone mm-hmm. somewhere else um yes so on that topic do you think specifically e-waste do you think that gets enough attention in the media and discussion um compared with other environmental issues or do you th- would you like to see it talked about more yeah i, I think uh, 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 the awareness of e-waste uh, i think is uprising um because right now like uh, you can see all this kind of uh, electronic uh, devices uh, uh upgrading and retirement like happen every year so uh, driving by the consumerism and driving by those big tech uh, companies so as well as the throwaway uh, culture so people purchasing uh, newer faster fancier uh, equipments but without thinking the consequence Mm -hmm. so I think now like uh, there's a lot of like um, uh, 
protesting uh, against the uh, ways from uh, developed countries in South Southeast Asia. So I think it's just brought into uh, attention of the people, like uh, uh, because there's a lot of like these uh, gradable uh, materials in the e uh, electronic waste, and and we need more uh, technology upgrade, and we need more like uh, full life cycle uh, consideration and also. So we need the government the research institute and also the manufacturers to play uh, play roles in in this uh, whole uh, industry upgrade and also we need to uh, have the uh, cautiousness and awareness of the consumers uh, uh, as well because it's like uh, fundamentally uh, we are who consume this products where whom uh, uh, dumb this product and we are whom uh, suffer from it mm -hmm. so i think yeah. it's um, ultimately and we need to solve it but we need a broader view to bring in all this like uh, interest uh, uh, related uh, parties to to get involved mm -hmm. um on, on that topic is there a particular type or group of person or people that you would most like to read waste tide and get its messages like bosses or consumers or people in government is there anyone you want yeah. the most <laughs> to get on board yeah i really would love to have this kind of uh bosses uh, from tech companies to read the book I, and mm. also right now actually we have some um um, entrepreneurs who are doing the recycling business in China reading the book and also people from Greenpeace they are they're also reading the book and mm. for sure the younger generation they're reading the book but I think the most important thing uh, for now is like those uh, decision makers the policy makers they they have to see the whole picture and see how important the issue is uh, to be deal with. So yeah, for uh, maybe for some local government, it, they think the development is the first priority, right? So mm -hmm. you can uh, pollute it first and then uh, deal with the uh, mess later. But the history proved that it doesn't work anyway so we have to think ahead of what's happening yeah so yeah and i think what you're saying there about politicians putting uh, development first that's although that can happen i guess that does happen in china there's the focus on growth and development mm -hmm. we have our own equivalent yeah. here in countries where even though the politicians are elected they'll do that usually with promises based on jobs or economy it's much harder to get elected i think even now if you're saying you're going to yeah. do so and so for the environment if the other guy you're competing with is promising more money so like you said totally a universal thing and also i, I think what you were describing about environmental activists bosses all these people have an mm -hmm. equivalent in your novel there's a environmental group uh, who are a little bit like greenpeace you meet yes i are there entrepreneurs there's certainly representatives from business there's one or two characters who are the, they are Chinese local government officials so maybe the mm -hmm. people reading the books will see themselves in these characters doing good or bad it would be it would be interesting yeah. to think about that um i've got one more question about guiyu so mm -hmm. i'm a little bit of a google maps addict if i want to mm -hmm. learn a little bit about something i'll put its name in and search for it so i yeah. i zoomed in on guangdong province and i zoomed in on mm -hmm. guiyu and i found it and I found, it, although it's near the coast, it's it's a little bit mm -hmm. different from your waste isle in the book because it's not an yes. island. Uh, but yes. I noticed there is an island not so far away from Chanteau that's mm -hmm. connected to the land mm -hmm. by a fairly new bridge, just like uh, the yes. waste island called, uh, sorry if I say mm -hmm. this wrong, Nan Ao, is that right? Yes, it, yes, did, Nan Ao. Did, did you take any inspiration from Nan Ao or is that just a coincidence? <laughs> Um, yes, uh, yeah, because it's very close to my hometown, so, uh, and I visit there as a tourist a lot. Um, I think uh, the, the geographic there is very uh, convenient and very uh, 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 good 
for me to build up the world and especially mm. the bridge and and you can build up all these kind of action scenes uh, uh, in between so um yeah i just followed the the geography of nan ao and also combined with the uh, 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 characteristic of uh, gui yu so combine mm. them together so I think it's the the uh, advantage of like a writer, mm, yeah. especially a speculative writer, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think uh, at first when I was looking, I knew Chanteau was your hometown, so I saw mm -hmm. this island next to Chanteau. So I thought, oh yes, I found Gui, <laughs> and then actually no, you've used your <laughs> creative license. Yes, that's cool. Yes, I'm very satisfied that I've solved that question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've just got a couple of final questions for you now. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. First one is two part question. Uh, part mm -hmm. one, what are you reading right now? And part two, are there yeah. any books, Chinese or not Chinese, that you'd like to recommend to the listeners? Um, yeah, what I'm writing, uh, what I'm reading right now actually is a couple of books. Actually, I'm uh, reading a lot of books like uh, Parody because maybe it are relevant to my writing right now. So, and maybe some just randomly uh, check. Um, mm -hmm. There's one I'm reading is, uh, the name is The Formula. <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, it's from Barabasi. So it's a, a network uh, scientist. So he studied in different uh, industries about how those uh, people succeed and there's any uh, uh, particular uh, 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 abilities or like connections behind their, their reason, their factors of succeed. So I think it's very uh, interesting and, and inspiring. Mm. And some other books I'm studying is like uh, some Buddhism oh, uh, cool. theory. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's actually a, a very uh, a marginalized uh, stream in Buddhism. Uh, actually, it's, um, uh, it's about like studying how to categorizing your consciousness and uh, and the, the process of like uh, 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 cognition uh, in Buddhism. So actually, there's a lot of very specific, very detailed phrase uh, in uh, uh, perceiving the world and how to shaping your consciousness in Buddhism. Hmm. theory so i think it's very also very inspiring to science fiction as well right. and also there's some uh um i would say uh, graphic novels one is from the handmaid's tale uh, oh, right. the graphic novel edition uh for renee uh Nant, i think uh her name is a she's a canadian uh uh uh, illustrator, so she adapted uh, this graphic novel for uh, Margaret Atwood's uh, 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 Handmaid's Tale. So I think it's very worthy to uh, check it out. Cool. That does sound interesting. I didn't know there was a, a graphic mm -hmm. novel of that. Um, yes, yes. I think just coming out this year. All right. Fun. Um, very last question. Is there any more of your own work or projects or platforms where we can follow you online that you'd like to promote or let us know about <laughs> um actually i just uh finished a graphic novel adaptation from one of my short story coming of the light which was Ooh. uh collected in uh, the broken star also in mm. anthology uh translate and editing by ken so i work with uh, an Italian illustrator, Jacopo Sigarini. So we're working together to adapt it from a short story into a graphic novel. So it's a pretty uh, short, one, but I think it's very interesting because we try to connect the technology with Buddhism uh, mm. in modern China. So yeah, it's a very, uh, I'll say it's a very uh, uh, comic and very um tricky story i'll say mm. yeah that's a uh, one i've not read i've got broken stars on my bookshelf <laughs> but um i've only yeah. read i read the essays at the 
well the intro at the start and the essays at the end for mm-hmm. the dissertation but yeah the only story in there i've been exposed to i think is at leeds when you read a future a history mm-hmm. of future illnesses but yeah um that's yeah, yeah. really exciting to hear D- do you know where listeners mm-hmm. will be able to read that one where it's going to be published yeah we are uh, right now we're connecting to some europe uh european publisher as well as some chinese publisher so see because graphic novel is a very specific uh, uh market there mm. so we need to find a, a very uh, proper uh publisher mm-hmm. and also i'm working with uh kai fu li the 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 author of uh, ai superpower so mm. we're co-authoring a, a new book about like the it's in between uh technology uh article non-fiction and science fiction because we try to settle down this kind of Im- uh, imaginary narratives into a a, a very uh, solid uh, uh scenario based on the very recent research and uh, industry development so to build up a, a, a world building on, on AI. So it's very uh, near future, very technology driven, and but also there's a lot of like uh, ethical uh, conflicts uh, between uh, the human and the machine. So I think it would be very interesting. That sounds amazing. Is that one lined up for publishing anywhere or are you going to have to find somewhere for that too? Um, actually we are under discussing with some very big companies a uh, very big publisher uh, all around the world so it's a it will be a worldwide publish okay. yeah so we can keep our eyes peeled for that one yeah uh, do you have a, a twitter as well right yes i have a twitter at uh chen chiu fan yeah yeah you're on there uh, if listeners want to connect or find out what you're up to um i've i've completely run out of questions but i'd just like to say Mm -hmm. thank you for coming on the show it's been a really good chat absolutely fantastic to have you thank you so much angus uh it's my pleasure too so one more thank you to chen chou fan there for having such a great chat with me and answering the questions so well welcome back anytime i should say that although we've had lots of amazing experts on the show this isn't necessarily an expert show i'm certainly not an expert i'm learning as i go and i'm very open to having anybody on the show provided you've read something that we can talk about i.e a piece of translated chinese fiction or you know i'm open to non-fiction if it's sufficiently interesting absolutely so just to go through the plugs again twitter angus likes words instagram trichafic t-r-c-h-f-i-c But most importantly, the thing you can do to help the show the most is tell your friends. So I think we said for um, Folding Beijing, tell someone who cleans up your rubbish. So we can't use that again. So let's go for tell your local mecha suit operator. Tell the boss of your family clan. Tell the um, economic hitman from your local American mega corporation. Tell all those people and tell your friends too. And until next time, die.